Talbert. I'm a teaching artist for Metau Arts, a nonprofit arts organization in Twist. Today we'll be doing landscape collages inspired by Marty Averett's work. We will be talking about foreground, middle ground, and background, and looking at how landscapes can be broken down into simple shapes. For this lesson, you will need a pair of scissors, two pieces of paper, a glue stick, or if you don't have a glue stick, tape will work, colored pencils, and crayons or markers. Marty Averett is an American, Kushwara, Choctaw, and Cherokee, born in 1942. He is a professor at Oklahoma State University. He paints abstract and representational landscapes. Landscape paintings can look complicated at first, but they can actually be broken down into shapes. What shapes do you see in this landscape painting? When I look at the trees as a whole shape, I see they form kind of a triangle. There are also lots of triangles in the water where the white reflections meet the dark water. The hills in the background also form a sort of triangle with curved edges. And the sky that we can see is sort of like a rectangle. Another thing to look at in landscape paintings is what is close and what is far away. What is close to you is called the foreground and what is farthest from you is the background. The part in between the foreground and the background is called the middle ground. What is closest to you in this painting? I see the yellow grass and bushes at the bottom of the painting, and I think that's the closest part to me. So that is the foreground. What is the farthest from you? The tiny hills that meet the sky and the sky look like they're the farthest away, so that's the background. What's in between the background and the foreground? I see hills with trees and telephone poles, so that's what we call the middle ground. So we're going to start with our two pieces of paper, um, and we're actually just going to set one of them aside. So that piece we're going to set aside. The other piece we're going to cut some strips out of. Um, so if you look at my sample um, landscape painting here, landscape drawing, um, each different part of the landscape is cut out of its own strip of paper. So the water, the grass, the hills, and the mountains were all its own piece of paper, a little strip of paper that then I colored. Um, so we want to hold our paper um, landscape orientation so that it's wider than it is tall. And we're going to cut some strips, so hot dog style strips going the length of the paper. So the first strip we're going to cut is going to be about the length of your finger, or a little bit longer. So something like this. It's a little less, about a third of the page across, a little less than half. Okay? And then we're going to cut some that are just a little bit shorter than this one. So a little bit shorter than your finger. And we'll just cut, um, oops. Cut it like this. And it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight lines. It's okay if it's not. All right, so we should have um, four strips of paper now. One that is a little wider, and then three that are a little narrower. So let's set our strips of paper aside now. And we're going to start, um, take your other sheet of paper that you set aside, and we're going to start by coloring in the sky. Um, so this is where you get to be really creative and think about, you know, what, what type of landscape do you want to do? So landscape is basically looking out at the world um, outside. Could be a landscape. Um, so it could be looking at the mountains, it could be looking at hills, it could be looking at um, kind of an agricultural area with um, maybe cows or things growing. So for our sky, think about where it is and what time of day you want. Um, so in my sample here, 
I did a blue sky with clouds, so it was daytime. Um, but I think right now I'm going to do a sunset. So I'm probably going to use like orange and red and yellow. So you can either follow along with me and do a sunset, or you can choose your own time of day and your own sky to do. So take a few minutes now to color in your sky, and um, the bottom, about the bottom third of your page is going to be covered by your mountains and hills. Okay, so we can color in the sky down to about the bottom third of your paper, so about the width of your hand. Color in this whole top section. And the colored pencils work really nicely for the sky um, because they're a little bit lighter, and so instead of using marker or something, which you can do if you want, um, but I kind of like the light look that colored pencils give it. All right, so now I have my um, dramatic sunset on my paper. Uh, so now I'm going to set this piece of paper aside again, and I'm going to go get my strips of paper. And I'm going to start with my um, widest strip of paper, which is actually going to be in the back, because the other things are going to be layered on top of it. I'm going to decide what do I want um, in my background. So we have the sky in the background, and then we'll also have um, something like in, in this one, I have mountains in the background. Um, so mountains are a great choice for the background, especially around here. But you could also do just kind of far away hills or um, really anything that's really far away that comes to mind. So go ahead and um, color in your background now. And you can, if you're going to do mountains, so I'm going to do mountains again, um, and I'm actually going to draw the shape of the mountains is one option. Or you could just color in the whole thing how you want the mountains to be in terms of color and texture, and then you could cut out, we'll, we'll cut out later um, the thing. So either draw the outline or just color the whole thing as if the whole thing were mountains. So I'm going to do some kind of snow-capped mountains, so I'm leaving a little bit of white on the top of each point of my mountains. I think I'm, I'm going to use some um, mainly blue and purple for the mountains. And the, in terms of the texture, I'm making all my lines um, kind of come down, so here's like my, my point of my triangle, these are all kind of like triangles, right? And from the point of the triangle, all my lines are coming down, as if they're all kind of radiating out of that point. Okay, so now let's take one of our um, narrower strips of paper and we're going to do, start working on the middle ground. So here we have the sky and the mountains in the background and then um, these orange hills, kind of golden hills, are my middle ground in this because they're in between the foreground and the background. So you can think about um, what do you want in your middle ground and I think I'm going to do hills again. So I'm actually um, just going to not worry about the shape of the hills. I'm just going to think about the texture and color of the hills. And I think this is going to be a springtime, um, springtime mountain scene. And so I'm going to do kind of green and yellow for my hills. Um, and this time, my um, the direction that I'm doing these strokes so that texture is a little different from my mountains. I'm kind of doing the strokes like long and curved, um, long ways direction of my paper.
Okay, and I'm actually going to add in some um, trees as well, but I have to remember this is the middle ground, so this is still really far away from me. Um, so my trees, when I add them in, are going to be um, pretty small. So kind of just small blobs <laughs> are going to be my trees. So you can add in trees if you want or whatever else you want to add in. Um, just remember that when things are farther away, they're smaller. So adding in some small trees. Okay, then I'm going to move on to my next strip of paper. Um, and I'm going to think about what do I want in my foreground? So what's going to be closest to us? And um, I think I'm going to do another kind of like a pond, like in my one I've already made. I have kind of water down here and then grasses. And I like that, so I think I'm going to do that again. Um, so I'm going to do kind of color in some grasses first and then my last strip will be water. Okay, so um, you can pick what you want for your foreground and just pick what color and what texture it's going to be and color those in um, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now I have my um, pieces of paper for the foreground, I have my middle ground, and I have my background. So now it's time to cut them out and to decide what shapes we want them to be in. So let's start with our background. Um, and if you drew an outline like I did, my purple outline of the mountains, then I'm just going to cut right along the outline. If you colored it in um, solid, kind of like I did for my middle ground, then you're going to decide what shape you want it and cut out that shape. So here I've cut out along the outline of my mountains um, and now I'm going to cut out my middle ground and I want it to be hills so I'm going to cut out curved lines um, making my middle ground kind of into hills. So hills are round um, so I want rounded lines for my hills. Something like this. And the, the bottom of each of these you can just leave flat because we're going to overlap it. So we actually won't see the bottom part of this. It'll be overlapped. Okay, so background, middle ground, um, and then I have my foreground, so which I have grass and water. Um, and I'm going to cut out for the grass, I'm actually going to cut out in a little bit of a jagged pattern. Um, so you can decide, do you want to cut straight lines, do you want to cut smooth lines, do you want to cut jagged lines, uh, it just depends what you have in your landscape and how you want to um, portray it. And then my water, um, I want it to be kind of like a pond, I think. So it's going to have a little bit of a curved line, a very gentle curve going across. All right, so now get get your um, background, your sky, and we're going to start arranging our landscape onto our sky. So put your background down first, so you have your sky, and then whatever is farthest back, put down first. And we're not gluing yet, we're just kind of arranging to see how we want it. Um, and then put your middle ground 
and then your foreground. And notice how I'm overlapping. So I'm not putting the pieces like this, which would be just right next to each other. I'm putting the one that's closer on top, a little bit on top of the one that's behind it. Okay? And you can just kind of take a couple minutes to arrange it how you like it, and then we will start gluing. All right, so to glue, to glue it down, um, we're going to want to start with what's farthest behind. So kind of remember how you have it arranged. And you could make little marks on the side with your pencil if you wanted to be really precise. Um, so I could be like, okay, I like the mountains right here, so I'm going to make a little red mark that shows me where the edge of my mountains goes when I glue it down. And then I'm going to move my foreground and middle ground. Um, and I'm going to tape down my background first, or glue down. So I'll use my glue stick or, or tape if you haven't. If you have tape, it works really well to make those little um, tape balls to put on the back to glue it down. And then, once you have your background glued down, go ahead and glue down your middle ground and then your foreground. So we're working back to front. What's farthest away, we glue down first, and then we glue down what's closer to us. So now we have our landscape all glued down, um, and we have our background, our middle ground, and our foreground. Um, and we cut out our landscape from um, shapes. So they're not geometric shapes, they're organic shapes, right? So it's not like a regular triangle um, or a regular circle, but our shapes have um, elements, like the mountains are kind of like triangles, right? And the hills are kind of like parts of circles. So now if there's anything else you want to add, um, like maybe you want to add a bird in the sky or more flowers or something like that, or animals, um, you could add that with your crayons or colored pencils, um, or you could cut out more things um, out of your scraps. So you could cut out, maybe I could cut out like a little deer and put it on if I wanted to. Just remember that things that are closer to you um, are going to be bigger and things that are farther away are going to be smaller. Thanks for making landscape collages with me today, inspired by uh, Marty Averett. So I hope to see you next time.